Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good. Okay, today we would uh, like to move on uh, with using solid elements and uh, learn how to take that into using solid elements with 3D CAD models to analyze beams and shafts, use different type of supports and load as needed. Uh, by the end of today's uh, class, you should be able to complete homework uh, 10 and 11 um, easily. So I would like to start with um, one quick uh, comment on homework number uh, nine that you all submitted. So I would uh, share my screen here. So what uh, you see right here is mechanical uh, with uh, the uh, part that you modeled for homework number nine that you're all familiar with. So we have uh, two forces and uh, we have two fixed supports and uh, you all solve this problem and uh, we're able to get force reaction at A, force reaction at B and you also looked at the deformation at C and the formation at D. And uh, I went a little bit and look here at total deformation as well as directional deformation, which mainly most of the things are happening in the X direction. But when I look at this carefully, I'm expecting this primarily to be moving in the X direction, which it is, but I see a little bit kind of getting distorted or bending a bit. And uh, in this model here, I am using the default mesh. So if I show you my mesh, this is the default mesh, like everyone did. The results were reasonable. I got 100%, there is no problem. But I wanted to show you the effect of the size of the mesh, very simply. So if I come here to my mesh, and if you look at the top, uh, looking at context is showing mesh, the one I'm selecting here from the project. Uh, I'm simply going to select sizing and refine the size of this mesh. So you get help you get a feel for what's the effect of the size of the element. It's asking me here in my uh, detail of sizing to select a geometry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my part. So I have my volume selector on and I'm going to come here and select my part. So that's selected. And I'm going to come here and change the element size from the default, which was about 0.5 to let's say 0.3 inches. And again, this is something you're going to get by experience, dependent on the shape and size of the body. You want to have, make sure you have a mesh that is converging. So I apply that and let's see the effect of that. So I'm going to right click the mesh and uh, say generate mesh. So it's going to generate based on the sizing. And uh, you can see here, I have a much refined mesh. Now I'm going to solve and look at the results. So it is solving, it's taking longer time because now I have way more elements. But here comes the solution. I'm going to look again at total deformation. Now let me play the animation. Now if you look at this, this is really what you expected to see. By the way, the results, the difference maybe is not that much, but there is some difference. Uh, and here this is way 
much closer to what I expect because I was able to fit smaller elements that better capture the behavior of this model. So this is total deformation and uh, I can come here and look at directional deformation. This is all in the X direction. I can look at the normal stress. Yes, I'm still showing some concentration where the load is being applied, but you can see here, uh, if I uh, use my probe, the numbers are very consistent. I have here uh, a tensile stress of 3,711. I have here compression of 2,470. And I have here also compression of 2,716. And you see, it doesn't take much when I have a refined mesh to find the average normal stress in the part. Okay. I just wanted to let you see the difference and the effect of the mesh using a refined mesh versus using a coarse, me coarse mesh in a small part that the one you played with in homework number nine. Okay. Next, I want to move into using uh, solid parts. So I'm going to come here and uh, save this project as Okay, let's exit this. Okay, next, I would like to go to beam modeling using solid elements.
And let's start simple. So if I want to do this uh, 10 meter long beam that has a cross section, that is like 0.2 by 0.4. So it has a rectangular cross section. And uh, we want to start with this. We want this to be fixed at one end. And I'm going to apply a 1,000 Newton at this end. So this is a cantilever beam that uh, we are uh, familiar with. And uh, we know the behavior we expect. I uh, expect that uh, when this beam is going to deform, that is going to go like this. So there is a fixed support, and then I start seeing the curvature. And I'm going to get my maximum displacement here. Now, uh, we were able to do this problem using beam models. I would like today to solve the same problem using uh, 3D geometry. So as uh, you would uh, expect, I would uh, create a section in the, if this is my X direction, so I will be working here in the Y, Z plane and then extrude it. Like this. And then uh, this would be my CAD. So I can do that in Design Modeler. Next, I would like to fix. And when I look at this fix support, when we were modeling this using beam element, I only had to select a vertex and uh, fix that vertex. And when I fix a vertex using beam models, I said I am fixing translation in the X, translation in the Y, translation in the Z. When we work with solid elements, there is nothing like rotation because everything in 3D can be represented by translation in X, Y, and Z. So degrees of freedom, when we are using solid elements, Are, can be represented by or three degrees of freedom for solid elements. Translation in X, translation in Y, and translation in Z. These should be sufficient to describe the deformed state of the part. So I do not need or do not have any need for rotation. And indeed, if you look at the vertex, when I was using beam models, this vertex is represented by this, or re is representing this face at the end. So if I come and I apply a displacement constraint to this face, now this is gonna prevent the face from moving or translating in X, in Y and in Z. And indeed, if this is not allowed to move in the X, then it really cannot rotate. This face cannot rotate. This straight face now cannot rotate. So if I fix that face, it can capture this behavior. And this is something we wanna see for ourselves. Next, I want to apply my loads. And again, this load in a beam model was applied to a vertex. I was able to apply this load to a vertex. Here, I'm gonna put this load to the face. So I'm gonna come here and apply a force to the free face. Let's put that in practice. Uh, I prepared the geometry already, though in uh, the YZ direction. So what uh, I did, I used 
why I, I kept this as um, X and this is Z, which is fine. So I have the geometry prepared so we can focus on the modeling because I trust you can all create the geometry and design modeler. So I'm looking here at the beam. And uh, if I look at, this is a 3D and uh, you can see here, this is the end face. Okay. I'm just showing here a wireframe so you can uh, better see it. So this is the end face that we want to fix. But this is a simple, I have a rectangle that is extruded. And now I want to do is, um, I also have a face sizing for the mesh to get a refined mesh, but I'm going to focus on the modeling aspect of it. So I'm going to look at static structure and I'm going to go to my environment and uh, within the static structure, I want to go to Structural and analysis settings. I can look here at structural and I'm going to apply a fixed support and we're going to get more into supports today, but I'm just going to put a fix. Now, please understand that when I'm applying a fix to a solid element or a 3D geometry, again, I'm just tra fixing translation in three directions. So I'm going to come here and fix a face. So I'm going to select a face specifically, and I want to select this end face. So I'm going to get, go apply and it's a fixed support. Next, I'm going to go to the free end here, and I'm going to go to again, my structure, and I'm going to apply simply a force. And I want to select my face, my front face, apply. And I'm going to choose uh, in a set of vector, I'm going to use component and my force is going in the Y direction. Y direction. And let's see here we are looking in the, it's the extra. So now I have my force. I'm gonna apply my force in the Y direction downwards. So I'm gonna put a minus 1000 Newton. So simply, this is what I did for, uh, to try to capture the behavior of a cantilever beam. I know I wanna look at the total deformation. So I'm gonna come here and put deformation and put total. And let's run this analysis. And here comes my deformed state. We have a very nice mesh because partially I'm using the sizing and I'm making sure this is a 10 meter long and I'm setting the element size to 0.2 meters. So we have a decent looking mesh. Now, if I look at the total deformation and I play the animation, this is exactly what I expected a cantilever beam to do. And I always like to look at the deformation and see how the part is behaving to make sure I'm capture the behavior of the part as I envisioned it or expected it. So you see, I see the effect of a fixed support like with it, we do not get a rotation at this fixed end, but at the free end, the face is free to rotate. I'm getting my maximum displacement at the free end and the fixed end is going nowhere.
Okay. So how about if we want to model, so this was a cantilever beam. If we want to model a simply supported beam. So something that looks like this. I'm going to still use the 10 meter, but I'm going to put a pin support at one end and I want to have a roller support at the other end. And I'm going to have a load that is distributed along the length of the beam. So this is my beam here. And then I'm going to have a distributed load. Like this. Of 200 Newton per meter. If this is 10 meters long, then this beam is carrying 2000 Newton. So the question will become, how do I model these supports? Again, if uh, we are looking at uh, our uh, 3D model, What is this pin support doing? The pin support is allowing my beam to rotate, but not to translate in any direction. So we really have to have a good understanding of our supports. How about the roller support? The roller support is allowing my beam to rotate and also to translate along the axial direction, which in, the, in my case, I called it Z. All right. So really when my beam deforms, I probably may get something like this. And uh, I really meant to show here that it can, and I'm exaggerating, that it can move in the Z direction. So this was the original location and this is the deformed location and please note that i don't didn't get any deformation in the y direction in the y direction it remains on the plane of the yeah it should re really be the roller but as far as the beam is concerned it stays on the axis how i'm going to translate these to this 3d cad model Now, uh, if I think of my pin support and uh, see, oh, the point is represented by a face. If I fix the face, as we have seen here, we're gonna prevent it from rotation. So a workaround is I can come here and fix my edge, the bottom edge here. Now, when I do that, the rest of the face is free to rotate. Indeed, the rotation is going to be about the bottom edge, which is fine. In real life, this uh, support like this is definitely not applied to a point, not applied to an edge either, but to some sort of a surface, and it does allow the rotation. So if I pick the edge, it would allow this face to move like this. which is kind of give me the rotation, all right. Now, how about this roller support? If I come here again, and uh, I want it to be free to rotate, so I'm gonna go with the edge, not the face. So I'm gonna come to this edge, and now I want the edge to move in the Z direction, but not to displace in the X and Y. So I can put specif specifically user displacement. 
So this would be a fix, the edge. Fixed support. And here we're gonna use the displacement and also we're gonna apply it to the edge. Okay, the next question that would come, how about the loads? I have a 200 Newton per meter. How do I apply that? By the way, this is the same beam that has the rectangular cross section. I have here a 0.2 and this is a 0.4. So this load, as you would expect in real life, I would be loading the top of the beam. So I would be applying my load on the top of the beam. And uh, you heard me here say real life, because with the 3D CAD model, I am really trying to capture the actual type or way of loading and the actual behavior. I'm trying to get closer. Of course, a 3D model is more expensive than a 1D model in terms of uh, computing uh, needs. So I'm trying to get as close as possible to what happens in real life. So yes, I can load the top face. So I have this 200 Newton meter is gonna be applied to the top face. Now this is here given as a linear load. So if I wanna change this to a pressure load, 200 Newton per meter, I'm gonna to have to divide by a 0.2, right? So, which is the width. So if I go like 200 Newton per meter divided by 0.2 meter, which is the width, we are going to get here 1000 Newton per meter squared. So I can apply this as a distributed load or a pressure. of 1000 Newton per meter square. That's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is to select the face and apply a force that is equivalent to the total force applied to the beam. So if I look at this, I have 200 Newton per meter over a length of 10 meter. So 200 times 10, I get 2000 Newton. So I can simply apply a force of 200 times 10, which is 2000 Newton on the top face. Both of these options should give us the same result. So let's go to mechanical and experiment with this. Okay, so let's do save project as. And I'm gonna call this uh, solid cantilever beam. And I'm going to save project as simply supported solid B.
So I'm going to come here and uh, get rid of my fixed support, get rid of this force at the free end. And I'm going to go to my static structure. And here is my beam. And uh, I'm going to start by applying the supports. So I'm going to zoom on this end. I'm going to go to structure and I'm going to simply fix. And this time I want to make sure I select an edge. I'm going to come here and select the bottom edge. Apply. So we fix that edge. I'm going to come to the other end and I want to go to structure. And from the supports, I'm going to pick displacements. And see, it's showing here the direction, so I know what I'm doing. So I want Z to be free, and I want to fix Y and X based on my coordinate direction. So I pick here the bottom edge, and the only one that we want to leave free is Z, but I want to fix Y, so I'm going to set it to zero, and I also want to fix X. Zero. Oops. Apply. All right. So now I have my supports. Next, the loads, and I'm going to do it two ways so you can uh, we can see the difference for yourself. So if I'm looking here at my beam, I'm going to go to structural, and for loads, you see there is a pressure. So let's start by doing a pressure. I'm going to come here on the top face and apply. And the pressure is defined by normal to the face surface effect. And I'm going to put this, we had it as uh, 1000 Newton per meter square or Pascal. So I'm going to put the magnitude of 1000. And it's applied as a pressure, so it's perpendicular to the surface, and it's, it's in the negative y direction. Let's solve this problem and see what we get. Solve. Is this what I expect from a simply supported beam? Remember, we're looking at total deformation, right? If I want to be more uh, particular and look at directional deformation, I can come here and go to results, deformation, look at directional. So let's see, let's say we want to see what's happening in the y direction which is deflection, right? So I can solve for that. And you look here, you see a nice symmetric beam in bending. You see that this edge is allowed to translate in the Z direction. You see the edge is moving in the Z direction while not moving on the Y and Z. And that allow, because I'm applying the supports to the edges, I am allowing my faces, both faces at the two ends to bend. You see, both of them do bend at the end. And these are kind of the little things we want to look at to make sure we're capturing the behavior. Now, uh, while we are here, let me show you that we can do things like we did with beams as far as finding support reactions. So I can... Um, uh, come and look uh, under when I'm defining my results, I can use a probe and say, let's find the force reaction and I can do it at the fixed support. I can also put a probe to find the force reaction at the displacement support. Look at the reaction. I'm getting 1000 Newton at one end and I'm getting 1,000 Newton at the other end. Perfect symmetry. Um, so these are the reactions and this is the deformation. 
uh, what else would you like to do as far as results? We can uh, use uh, a probe, uh, of course, to probe it anywhere. But if you are using a failure theory and want to look at a Vumisa stress, you will come here, do stresses, and do, uh, for example, equivalent Vumisa stress. I solve for it. And you see here the effect of bending. Vomesis, of course, is always positive. But if this beam is going to fail, and I think I, I really like this uh, fringe plot, you see like the critical areas are more to the top and bottom where I get maximum tension, maximum compression. This is where I see the red. And more towards the center of the beam. So you see towards the support, except for the fixed edges, there is no red, the fixed edge gets a little bit high, but the dark blue is the least stress. So I get my maximum stresses close to the center, which is what we really expect. And this is what you would be looking for. All right, so we'll uh, save this as the simply supported beam. And let's go a step forward. and start looking at circular beams to like our shafts. So how about, if we have like our shaft, This is the circular section. And it is supported on bearings. At the two ends. So I'm going to model this if I have bearings. In, uh, in 3D, the bearings are going to be applied or uh, be present. If I'm looking here as just the body of the shaft, this is going to be surrounded by bearings. So here is where my bearings are going to be holding this. And I'm going to have the same here. And of course, this has a width. So if I'm looking at the lens, I need to know the width of this surface area where the bearing is being applied. So let's say it's a two inch bearing. And let's say we have a 10 inch in between. If you look at this, now let's try to imagine the behavior of this. Is it going to be like a perfect simple support? The face is not allowed to rotate or does it get some rotation or how does it behave? Now, uh, in order to make this look more like uh, a beam like this, and let's say we're going to have a load applied to it between the bearings, a distributed load. I would imagine when this wants to deform, it's going to go some like this. Yeah, this part is not very free, but then it's going to bend and go like this. So how do I capture this behavior using a 3D model? If I look at a cross section where the bearing is present, this is the cross section of the shaft and it is surrounded by
bearings like this. And let's try to understand what are these bearings trying to do to the shaft within this area. Anytime the shaft is trying to move perpendicular to its face, there is a reaction that resists it. But at the same time, it facilitates the rotation or the spinning of the shaft about its axis. So how do I apply a support to capture this behavior? One of the nice options we have in ANSYS is what is known as a cylindrical support. Now, if you know cylindrical axis, there is a radial direction and there is a tangential direction. So this would be radial direction. And this, the perpendicular to it would be tangential. And then, of course, the tangential and the radial makes a plane. And then there is another third direction that is perpendicular to the plane that we can call axial. Okay, so the axial, this here would be the axial. So I can use this cylindrical coordinates or cylindrical supports to model the behavior of what the bearing is trying to do. The bearing is free in the tangential direction. It's fixed in the radial direction and is really truly free in the axial as well. That's what the bearing does. So it's primarily fixing the tangential direction. Please keep in mind that when I model a shaft and I'm doing a static structure analysis, I also want to make sure that I am restraining rigid body motion. So even though my shaft in real life is spinning, we do not want the shaft to be free to spin when I model it. So we need to find a way to prevent it from rotation. Now, yes, when I'm using 3D, there is no rotation of a point, but there is a feature that called, is called like remote rotation. It's as if I am fixing a face from a distance. And this is something we are gonna apply in ANSYS and I'm gonna show you as we pull a model. So let me switch to ANSYS and see how we can do something like this which by the way, what I can do here is very similar to what I can do to solve homework number 10, homework number 10. Right, what I have here is one of the uh, parts that uh, we've done, if you recall. This is the very first problem that we did where we had the two parts. So this is the geometry for it. So I'm gonna come here and uh, use this geometry. Let's... Yeah, this was, uh, I called it here, uh, force 
solid example. Let's come here and say file. And I'm gonna save. So I'm gonna modify this to serve our needs. So I'm gonna come here and say in uh, Sketcher, the first sketch in the Y, Z plane, I'm gonna make sure that this has a diameter of one inch. And I'm gonna generate my first extrude. So this is my first extrude. And I wanna make sure this is like 10 inches fine. Uh, yes. All right, I'm gonna modify my uh, second extrude. So I'm gonna use sketch two, which is right here. I'm gonna make this also a one inch Oh, this is the radius, so I'm going to make it a 0.5. And I want to make sure my extrude, this one is only two inches. Generate. Okay. Now, uh, please note when I am doing my second extrude, when I'm doing my uh, second extrude that I do not want to use add material. I want to use add frozen. So I'm going to generate. And here comes a place where I'm going to put my shaft. Now uh, on the other end, I want to do the same. So I want to create a plane here that I can sketch on. So I'm going to come create new plane and I'm going to create this plane uh, from a face and I want to select the face. Apply. So I have here plane six generate. Here comes my plane six. I'm going to do a sketch and I'm going to use my sketching tools to create a circle. I want to see my P and I want to see my T here. So this is another one inch. I don't need any dimensions. I'm going to go back to modeling. I have sketch three that I'm going to use to extrude. So just to put things in perspective here, you see I'm having the main part. I have the part where the bearing is going to go. I need another part here where the bearing is going to go. So I'm going to go for another extrude. So I'm gonna come here, extrude, and I wanna select a geometry, which in this case is gonna be my sketch three, apply. And now I wanna go two inches as shown, perpendicular here as shown. Very good, so I'm gonna go generate. Ah, I did use add material, so it blended to the main part. Now this is not gonna allow me to select a face. So I really want to make sure that I use add frozen. So let's see what, and this is an important part. So please pay attention to this. When I'm creating my bodies, I want them to be distinct to allow me to select these faces to apply my support. So I'm gonna use add frozen, not add material, generate. And here comes three distinct bodies. And like we did earlier, I have here one solid, another solid, and a third solid. But really these all should make one part. So I'm gonna select, and all this is in design modeler. 
I'm gonna select the three solids and say form a new part. So yes, indeed, I have three bodies that make one part. And they all have the same diameter. And that's why I had to create three bodies. Now, um, when you look at your uh, homework number 10, which is this, you wanna be careful because now I have my bearing here, which the problem statement tells you to use uh, a one inch as far as I recall. So we're gonna go like these dimensions are center line to center line. So this is eight, eight, six to the center line. So really your first bearing part is gonna be like one inch. Then you're gonna have a seven inch. And I'll uh, show you that in a second. So when you are looking at uh, this shaft, your dimensions, Sorry for that. Okay. So here it says in the problem statement that dimensions provided are center to center. Please note that the bearings and pulleys wet are one inch each. The total length of the shaft then should be 23. Where is this coming from? So I'm gonna have a one, then I'm gonna have a seven, then I'm gonna have a one, then I'm gonna have a seven, then I'm gonna have a one, then I'm gonna have a five, then I'm gonna have another one at the end. So this shaft, when uh, modeled using solids, you're gonna have a one, a seven, a one, a seven, a one, a five and one. So center dimensions like this, if you see here, these are going to the center. These are the eight, eight and six. But if you look at the detailed, these where I'm gonna have my bearing, where I have my loads or the pulleys attached, these are all one inches each. So if I come here and look at this, this eight ends up here seven, one, seven, five, and one. 
So if you look at this, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces. So really when you're trying to solve homework number 10, you're gonna have seven extrudes. And every time you're doing add frozen to make sure they are distinct parts. So if I go back to my geometry here, I have one part made of three bodies. So I'm gonna save that and I'm gonna go to workbench and I'm gonna launch mechanical. Professor, I thought you I thought you made those extrudes two inches. Are they for the bearing? No, this is a different problem. This is the one I was. Yeah, this is the problem. I just jumped to the homework to show you, but uh, the two inches, and I'm I'm doing just a very simple uh, problem that we were looking at right here. So I did this two inches based on this problem. Uh -huh, I see. You see? Okay. So that's the problem we're trying to solve. All right, so here comes mechanical. And I'm still waiting for my uh, three bodies to show that makes one part. So let's check. You see the question mark right next to the geometry? Because uh, it's reminding me, let's see here, what did we get? So display, and I want to show. Shaded exterior. So you see here, this is the part that we created. One part made of three bodies. And uh, the first body here has material and it's using the example let's make it all structure steel and uh, the question mark here because i need to define the material so i'm going to assign structure steel as well and the last body is also made of structure steel. All right. So we have uh, our part with material assigned. Three bodies that makes the one part and I want to make sure to look at my mesh. So I'm going to come here and generate the mesh. Very nice, very decent. Now, how are we going to model this? So let me get rid of this that we inherited. So we want to define our static structure analysis and we want to model the bearings. So I'm going to go to the environment. I'm going to go to supports. And when you come here, you see there is a cylindrical support option. So I want to apply a cylindrical support to this face where the bearing is going to go. So I'm going to go apply. But if I leave it at this, please note, it is fixing the radial direction the axial direction and the tangential direction. Which one of these is the only one I need to leave fixed is gonna be the radial to mimic what the bearings are doing is preventing any time it wants to go in the radial direction is being prevented. So we wanna make sure that tangential is fixed and the others are free. Okay. 
So that's one cylindrical support. I'm gonna also apply another cylindrical support to the other end. I'm gonna go apply. And again, I wanna do the same. So the radial is fixed. Did I say something wrong? Let me make sure. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm sorry, I messed here. I meant to say the radial is fixed and the tangential, of course, is free. Okay, so if you look here, the radial is fixed, the tangential is free, the axial is free. So that's what we are trying to do. So I'm gonna come here. Again, the radial is fixed, axial free, tangential is free. I'm gonna do the same with the second cylindrical support. I am only gonna fix the radial and set the axial to be free and the tangential to be free. And here comes an important point before we do anything further. Now, uh, we think that these are capturing the behavior of our uh, bearing supports, but are these sufficient? Let me just make sure I fit my screen so you can see it. Okay. Are these sufficient to prevent rigid body motion? By all means, no because these are allowing the shaft to spin as well as allowing it to move along the axial direction. So I wanna prevent these rigid body motions. So I'm gonna to go to, again, my uh, structural and I'm gonna to go to supports. And uh, you see here, there is a remote displacement. So I'm gonna use this option and apply it at the very outer face. So I'm gonna come here to this face and that's the one I wanna select. So we are selecting a face, apply, and we have one face. So I picked the very outer face. And what I wanna do here is I wanna prevent spinning of the shaft, which is rotation about the X axis. So I'm gonna put zero. Please remember, there are no torques that want to make this to spin, but the analysis is not gonna run because numerically it's not gonna work. And uh, so I fix rotation. I also wanna prevent translation along the X. So I'm gonna set a zero here. So I would like you to take a look at what I did here with this remote displacement. It's all free except rotation about X and rotation about, I'm sorry, and translation in the X direction. Please remember, I said with uh, 3D or solid models, we only have three translational degrees of freedom. That could be X, Y, and Z, radial, tangential, and axial. That's correct. How come rotation is showing here? Because this is not applied to a face or an edge or a point directly. It's what is called a remote displacement. So it's really preventing that face from rotating about the X direction, which is attached to the body. So it's just gonna hold. But if I come back and check the reaction from this remote displacement, I should get a zero. This is similar to what we did when we use beam models and we prevented the beam from spinning. So this is the same idea. Next, I wanna apply my loads. And in this case, I have a distributed load. So I can come here and go to structure and I can select to do it as a force applied to the face. And it's just simply in the uh, Z direction. Sure here. It's in the Y direction. So I'm gonna select the outer surface, apply, and I want to apply that, remember uh, what we had here was a distributed load, and uh, this was, let's see, I'm gonna use a 100 pounds per inch. And this, if this is 10 inches long, then I really have a total of 100 times 10, so I have a thousand pounds. So I'm gonna come back here and apply. I'm gonna use components, so I choose my direction. And in the Y direction, I'm gonna put a minus 1,000 pounds. 
Oh, it's uh, showing here in Newton's. Uh, let's fix the units. So I'm going to go to the tools, units, and make sure I'm using US customary. And now I'm going to fix my force as one minus 1,000 pound force. That's better. And please note, when I select the face, ANSYS is going to distribute that along the lens of that surface. So now we are uh, ready to run the analysis. I want to make sure I uh, get rid of some of the defined results here. One of the things we really want to check for is going to be the uh, reaction from this remote displacement. So I, I want to put under solution, I want to go to probe and do force reaction and use the remote displacement and go again probe, use moment reaction and use the remote displacement. I can also put under results, I'm sorry, probe, I'm going to do force reaction and do cylindrical support, the first one, go to probe, force reaction, and do the other cylindrical support too. So these are kind of kind of give us a feel. Let's solve and see what we get. And it already doesn't, okay. It says not enough constraints appear to be, but it realizes that this is constrained. You're gonna see the funny thing that's happening close to the beginning. Now, uh, please keep in mind, I exaggerated a little bit in such a small lens to use a two inch, but I really wanted you to get a feel and show the effect of these bearing if they were so wide. In a way, they kind of add fixity to the beginning of the shaft. So let's look at total deformation. See where the bearing are applied, they're kind of fixed, they're kind of fixed. Then immediately it starts curving. So this is the behavior as we expected. So if I show you here what we expected here, and I compare that to what we are getting, we were able to capture this behavior to a good extent. If I look at uh, normal stresses, yes, I have an issue here. We see this very high stresses. Maybe a good, better representation would be, again, because of the change from uh, fixed bearing to completely free. Uh, if I want to look at where failure is expected to happen, I would be looking at von Mises stress. And that's all for that. Okay. Again, I wouldn't be very much concerned. That's a numerical error right here. But I would definitely be concerned, like if I flip this here, you see close to the transition from the bearing to the free, I have high stress concentration, but if you look carefully, these are not throughout the element. There is definitely discontinuity. I can do better if I refine the mesh, but the actual concern to me should be in this area. So if I am uh, if I am the designer doing this, I would probably like to get a probe and see what is the maximum stress right here. This is the one that I would be concerned about. Again, this is something that comes by experience. But uh, let's move forth to the reactions. And if I look at the force reaction at one bearing, you see I'm getting a total uh, here. This is from the remote. So this force reaction is the one at the remote and I'm getting almost a zero. The moment reaction is almost a zero. So that proves the fact that these supports from the remote displacement are not doing anything compared to the bearing support. Now this is the one that's carrying the 500 pound force on one end 
And on the other end, I have the other 500 pound force. Okay. So this is what I expect you to do for homework number 10. For homework number 11, believe it or not, is going to be simpler than that because your geometry is going to be something like this. which makes it easy because you can just do a revolve like I did here, a revolve, and you already have all the faces. So when you have the shaft like this, you are simply gonna apply supports at the two, uh, actually your supports here are applied for homework 11. You're gonna have one support at one end and then you have one here and we need these areas to apply the load where the pulleys are gonna attach. Like if I look to my example, I cannot apply the point force that uh, we have from the pulley. So like you look here, 350, how would I apply this? And this is why we need to create these bodies where you can apply your load. So this is where the pulleys are gonna attach. And this is where I'm gonna apply my forces. So this is the pulleys and the, here we have the bearings. So what you see here, this is for homework number 10. For homework number 11, you're gonna end up with something like this. Uh, please get started on that. And uh, on Thursday, we can do more on uh, uh, something like a step shaft and apply this. I think most of you will be able to successfully complete homework 10 and 11. And uh, on Thursday, I'll be meeting with you again. I'll be happy to take any questions as uh, needed and uh, shed more light on uh, an example like what you're doing for homework 11. Does anyone have any questions before uh, I let you go? We're all good? Okay, we're gonna stop here. Please uh, do your best to complete homeworks 10 and 11, get your questions ready when we meet again on Thursday. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure.